This snippet is Adding Game Walls and Creating Animations. My name is Jeremy Osborne, presenting from AGI Training for Microsoft. In this snippet, you're going to learn how to add game walls to your game, so that when the player plays, the ball will bounce off three of the four walls. Additionally, when the player misses the ball, we want that player to lose a life and the game to restart. So to get started, go ahead and open up the Beehive project associated with this snippet. And we can see here within the Objects and Timeline panel that three of the four walls have already been set up. Now if I go ahead and click on Top Wall in my Objects and Timeline panel, I can see the top wall is highlighted. The same with Right Wall and Left Wall. Additionally, if I click on the arrow to the left of Left Wall, I can see that there's a collision behavior which has been applied to this wall. So all these walls are, are transparent images. We're going to go ahead and add the fourth wall here now by clicking on the Projects tab and then scrolling up if necessary. And within our Beehive project, I'm going to expand the folder Wall Images. Here we can see the three other walls, and again, they're nothing but PNG files that happen to be transparent. Now I'm going to add the bottom wall to my game. So first I'll click on Layout Root so that it's selected, and then click and drag bottomwall.png onto my artboard. Then I'll go ahead and reposition that so it's at the very bottom of the board. I can use my arrow keys as well in order to push it slightly down. In the upper right hand corner, I want to rename this by clicking in the Properties tab, and then typing bottom wall. Then press return. Now I need to add the collision behavior to this wall or else nothing will happen. I'm going to click on assets and then I'm going to click on behaviors. I'll locate collision and drag and drop it on top of my bottom wall. That collision behavior has now been added. We can see on the right hand side of the screen within the properties tab we have a section called collision properties. Click on the collide with all checkbox but before we leave here, let's look at this section, Lives. Currently, Lives is set to zero. I'm going to go ahead and type negative one, or minus one. This means whenever the ball hits that wall, the player will lose a life, and additionally, the game will restart. Let's go ahead and test this now by choosing Project Run Project. When the browser opens, click on the ball to start the game. The ball bounces, and let's let it hit, and it restarts. Now the next thing we need to do is give a new player some prompting on how to start the game. In other words, clicking the ball might not be obvious. I'm going to close this browser, and now we're going to create an opening animation. Now the object that you're going to animate is a text block. In order to add the text block to your page, let's do the following. Within the Objects and Timeline panel, click on Layout Root first. And then within the toolbar, click on the Text Block tool located here, shaped like the letter T. And then click and drag down and to the right here at the center of the screen. Some text has actually appeared, although it's really hard to see because it's black on black. So let's change the color by going into the Properties panel and clicking in the color green, and then narrowing it down a little bit by clicking in the upper right hand corner for fluorescent green. Now click on the text panel down below and change the font size from 8 up to 18. And now let's change the default text to the following. Click Ball to Play. Click on the black arrow, or the selection tool, to move that slightly, centering it as needed. Now we need to set up this text block for animation. So do the following. Within the Appearance section, locate the Visibility property and change Visible to Collapsed by clicking on this menu. Now we'll set up our animation workspace by choosing Window, Workspace, Animation. What this will do is put the Objects and Timeline panel at the bottom of the screen. Now let's create a new storyboard or animation. This is the only way we can create our timeline. We'll click on the plus sign here, and then we'll type the following, Game Begin. Click OK. And what you'll now see is that the timeline has appeared within the Objects and Timeline panel, and anything that we do is recorded. In particular, anything we do to the text block is recorded. So let's do the following. I'm going to scroll down slightly so we can see our entire artboard here. Within that timeline, click and drag the yellow timeline marker slightly to the right, and then locate the Appearance section and change that visibility back from Collapsed to Visible. You'll notice that as soon as you do that, a keyframe has appeared. This keyframe is shaped like an oval, and it records the change. Now we're going to add another change. We're going to change the opacity from 100 to 0 by clicking in the Opacity field located here. And typing 0. 
click and drag that timeline marker to the one second point and then within the opacity field type 100 to bring it back up then click and drag that marker again to the two second mark and bring opacity back down to zero so we see that there are three keyframes visible let's press the play button to see what this does we get a fade up and a fade down so we also want this animation to repeat until the user clicks the ball so first let's take care of the repeating behavior Click on the Game Begin Storyboard, located here under the Objects and Timeline tab. And within the Properties panel, locate this menu, Repeat Behavior, and change it to Forever. Now let's close our storyboard by clicking on the X. And now let's go back to the Design Workspace by choosing Window, Workspace, Design. The next thing we need to do is make sure that this animation is triggered when the page is loaded. In order to do that, within the Objects and Timeline panel, click on User Control. You can think of this as the control for the entire page. Within the Properties tab, locate this icon shaped like a lightning bolt and click it once. This exposes all the events that we can apply to the user control. We're interested in this one, Loaded. Double click within the Loaded field, and this brings us into our C Sharp. We now want to type the following code, this.gamebegin.begin, and then make sure you close it with parentheses and a semicolon. Now choose Project, Run Project, and we can see that our animation is beginning to play. Let's click on our ball, and the game plays. But we have a slight problem here. What we can see is that the animation is still playing. So what I'd like to do is add one additional piece of code that tells that animation to stop as soon as the game is starting. I'm going to close this and go back to my main page.xaml. Go ahead and click on the ball itself within your artboard. And then in the Properties panel, locate Mouse Left Button Down. This is another event that we're going to attach some code to. Double click within that field. And we're going to add the following code. This dot game begin dot stop. Again, make sure you put parentheses and a semicolon. And then choose Project Run Project. So now we can see that our starting animation is playing. When I click on that ball, it disappears and the game begins. Thank you for now. This is Jeremy Osborne presenting from AGI Training for Microsoft.